My past will outlast me Ask me if I agree with my choice Hi, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of the Roundtable After Dark. This is kind of an impromptu podcast idea that's come up last minute, but I think it's important subjects and kind of a new concept for me. It's basically a podcast with an interview guest, but it's something that I'm going to start branching out to because there's a lot of us in the, especially the typical skeptic community and the paranormal community that have a message to share with each other. And we don't even tend to get to talk to each other beyond the chat. So if you're in the typical skeptic or the paranormal community and really have, want to be able to get your message out or chat, uh, this is going to be a platform for you can where you can do that. Um, my very first guest uh, is going to be Christy Campbell. And uh, she recently did an SSP reading for me based off of the prologue of a book that I'm writing, which was downloaded to me during a recent hypnosis session. Um, and Christy's just going to give us a quick run through of what she saw, and she's going to do a card reading as well, uh, because mm -hmm. I just woke up in September of last year, and there's not a lot that I know beyond what I've picked up in hypnosis sessions about all of the programs and all of the things that I've had, you know, in different fractals of my consciousness. And Christy is a very intuitive person when it comes to that. Um, so please welcome Christy Campbell. Thank you guys for having me on. Um, I know that um, when you was asking me to look at the book and everything to the Amazian, um, I have to kind of, um, if I have to kind of see that. Yes, we're losing your audio again. Each other's energy. Um, can you hear me okay? Or am I muted? Can you your, hear your me? Your audio is cutting out. Losing audio? There you go. You're good now. Okay. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Must have been saying something. It's okay. Important. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the. <laughs> Okay, ready? Okay. <laughs> no, the the um we were doing I was doing the energy work with you to sync our our energy together so I could do like a Reiki scan because I'm a Karuna Reiki master. And take a gum out, sorry. Um and then so um what I was seeing then is um you might have to remind me some of the things that I say and it's my clothes and it's kind of like I'm just following you along the thing. Um, so at, at first, you have, can you kind of tell me what I started with? I can tell you where I was following. Oh, okay. So, yeah, well, this good. was another one. When you was doing the regression with Maya, then then you was you she was asking you, um, you know, which door, find the golden door. Do you see the golden door? And then where is it at? And then I said, it's at the back. And then you said, it's at the back, you know, toward the back. And so I could answer for you or just kind of know, um, or I would pick the same thing too, you know? And then, so you went into the room and it was your birth. Uh, your, your mother was giving birth. And then uh, you said that the doctors are not human, that they were reptilian. That, and I, she asked, well, what are they? And I said, reptilian. And then you said reptilian. You know, I, I was just saying this separately, you know? And then yeah. uh, I didn't listen to any more because I didn't, I, I don't know, I didn't, uh, I kind of wanted to hear more of what was going on and not just answer like I needed, I wanted it faster, you know, like what you saw and um, everything with that, like as far as your birth. And then they took you and because you said they, they, she asked, did they save you, those doctors, but I didn't know what for sure who they were like if they were underground the the dumb um the the doctors like that in the military bases because that's what i was feeling like there was the doctors in the military bases so were those who were those doctors um from what i understand of it i think they are with the super soldier program um, basically they come in from a different density and collaborate with the governments 
And basically it's a trade-off, you know, I was a high risk birth. And so what they did is like, you know, probably going to die. So we'll save them with some hybrid programming. And the whole trade-off is I now end up being um, basically a super soldier in the distant future. There's a fractal of my consciousness that exists there that comes back to help the new earth. Right. And that's what I was getting a lot of my nightmares about was because there's the people that choose to stay in the third density. And there's those of us that have ascended, but we can also transition back. And that's the super soldier program that I was seeing during that regression is I can go from like, say, the sixth or eighth density and come back as a defender of people in the third density. Right. And those were the okay. nightmares. I was having when I was seeing the reptilians and like blowing their heads off because I was transitioning back through the densities to protect the third density and the new earth. Oh, okay. And that's just one fractal of the super soldier because you have other aspects of yourself that's like the in clone bodies that is the super soldier, you know, because you have been like blown up and, you know, then they put you back in the regen tank and then you, then they bring you back and put you out in, in battle and everything too. Um, so what I, cause I remember I had talked, if my mic or anything cuts out, just let me know. Okay. Um, yeah. And so I had seen that you was with the queen mother, remember? You was I was yeah. talking about that with the queen mother, and so I was seeing that you uh, were in the the project Ibis. It's called Ibis, and where this where these children, Mike, you know, because it's born, it's like a born were you born on a military base? Okay, were you born on a military base? No, but my mom. Yeah, my mom actually grew up in a town uh, in Ontario that is, like, there's a military base within, like, five minutes of the town she grew up in. Okay, so then, so, um, with with the IBIS program, then, um, that's, like, I see, like, Michael Aquino in, with that, but, because, and I saw, also see... George Bush Senior. Your they mic again. The is there as well? Um, is the audio good? Okay. Yeah. I might need to go with my mom's again just to try it. Should I? Should I go over there just to try it, or just keep on trying this for now? What do you want me to do? I think it's just just stay. Uh, we'll just keep trying it. I think it's just the way the yeah. one heads up turns. Okay. Because it says low bandwidth on the thing up there. That's what the... Because I have a, a cheapo computer. I need a new computer for myself. That's what, you know? Yeah. I'm trying to manifest that. That's all. Yeah. So, so then... um, So with the Project Ibis, then, then you were like with the Queen Mother, and then she would set you on her lap, and then make face she would shape shift her face into the reptilian face um and then you you can mimic the faces uh, of anything you know they they can make you look at this and then you could you could change into the the cat or the grays your face just temporary like a it's like a screen or something like that and because your eyes your eyes are different than a lot of people's eyes. It's like your eyes are, um, there's something in, something with your eyes, like you're uh, an angelic, um, it's just like a it's pure, like kind of water, like a water, um, you know, like, tr I don't know how to, I never really seen that, but you, you uh, so I don't know how to, what the name of it is, but like your eyes, you can look at something and then just shift your whole face, you know, um, for that program. I don't know. Um, so Excuse she me. shows, she, huh? You're actually, um, that's in the future. Like in that same session, I like found out too, that like when we transition back and forth through the densities, when, like when we figure that out, right. Um, 
you actually come into exactly what you're describing. You're a human, but your face is transitional. Like you look like what you need to look like when, okay, like say I come back to the third density and I need to interact with the third density version of my mother, right? Well, I would come back to this, right? And then if I, mm -hmm. if I don't need it, I don't really need to put that much energy because we're all just energy. I don't need to use the energy to make the face if I'm in a different density. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you, and so that's, uh, I, that it just seems like that aspect or that it's in your eyes. And then it just is like, um, I don't know. It's like, it's like you're not in just, your audio again i don't know it's like a pure like air distant water you know i just that's what i audio mother okay <laughs> i don't know man uh do you want you want me to, to go to the other just to try it one more time or what do you think yeah, uh because i don't know it just says low bandwidth man huh this uh, pop uh, over to I, I had an issue with it in the other one Okay, because I had an issue with the okay. previous video too. Yeah, it, huh? I, I don't. Doubt yeah, I did the same thing. I, like I was lagging. Yeah, this is 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 yeah. monitored and stuff, you know. So so you, I'll get off here and then get back yeah. on there. So will you resend me the link again? Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. And we are back. It wouldn't be an episode of the Roundtable Show and even After Dark if it wasn't for technical difficulties. We are back with Christy Campbell, and she is going to give it another go at giving me my G reading that she picked up the other day after we were sharing some energy. So if yeah. you want to pick up where you left off, Christy, just let her rip. Okay. So... So I was talking about you with your eyes, how it's kind of like angelic, like your eyes are kind of iridescent um, and you are like, I just see like as an angel child, you know, like you're an angel or something. And like, I think it just seems like they hijacked. Um, I think what I, what I seem like is, it seems like they, they, like you were pulled into this reality or something like that. Like, um, I'm, oh, um, you know how like the star seeds, how they was supposed to be coming in, coming here to bring the frequency. So I think that's kind of like how, how, like you you were because your mom had a different kind of birth, and so it seems like you aren't you aren't you have angelic DNA, you know. So you're not you're not maybe you might have a little bit of her DNA. But I think a lot of your DNA is um, elsewhere, interdimensional, however, you know. So that's why you had a difficult birth, um, you know, with her delivering or or you um, you said you almost died. Is that right? Is that what happened? You almost died. So well, it's yeah, like... I, had, uh, I had severe jaundice, uh, fetal mm -hmm. alcohol syndrome, and I was born addicted to um, uh, amphetamines. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, like with those programs... They pick the mothers. Um, I mean, I don't know if is she your like adopted mother, like you. But did you were you placed um, in like foster care or something after her, or you she raised uh, no, you? No, it was uh, like my mom raised me. Uh, there was a brief period I stayed with my biological father, but mm -hmm. uh, for the most part, it was my mom and my stepdad that raised me. Okay, so so like those those women, I. I think that they were also a part of the project as well. You know, like a, a different generation though. Like it seems like she was, um, seems like she was targeted as well. Cause I can see her be, so, you know, there's a reason why people do um, drugs or drink is to mask, you know, a, 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 you know, a pain um, or something that they don't want to look at, you know? So like I feel like she was in the program because I don't know if your grandpa was like in the military or not. Was he in the military, her dad? 
um my uh biological father's dad was yeah and, I, and so i think that like there's a military where she would be like as a sex slave um be sent to do like spy work you know kind of like i do and and so she's like a, a yeah spy assassin she goes into missions like that so she's utilized and and then it's like I can see that really like she would be targeted heavily growing up like she was really like like always feeling like somebody's watching her you know like always looking over her shoulder because somebody's following her um and it's really really scary at times how she feels do you know anything about that with with that do you know um not that she's mentioned in particular. I know she had a sexually abusive uh, stepfather. Yeah, and, that's you know why that that happened. You know why that happens is because it's yeah. done to fracture your mind. You know, so yeah. when she's when she's young, then she when she's little, she's gonna have that right off the 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 right off. You know, like her her mother her her mother was is in the program then too because if it's her stepfather her stepfather and mother then then he and he abused her so he's yeah. also abusing her mother so it's generational this is generational trauma so yeah. so she's so i'll just go with your mother because it's it goes back you know to to he because she her she is traumatized and mind split mind fractured at from birth because he's he's doing it he's abusing her right at infancy just like how have, have you heard of kathy o'brien have you listened to any of her stuff or bryce taylor well um that kind of or fiona uh barnett um those girls talk about being a generational trauma um to where they are abused right like even in the infant even in the womb you know the mother's uh, traumas being passed on um, but when they're born then they are being groomed as an infant to have be passed around um for sex for the men you know so they are oh. passed around and and then the the baby is is that this is done to the baby until um and then the baby's passed around to different people but the 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 father the whoever that the male figure is that's doing it he's the one who is in charge of of doing that at the very beginning of splitting her mind so then her yeah. mind is open and fractured because she has had trauma from the very first you know yeah. and so he would he would have her doing um all kinds of everything to him you know um and and then at a certain age then then she's taken to like the if he's a part of a freemasonry or a church or you know these cult places like places that are masked to be like the group of men that abuse babies and children you know because yeah. she's like three she's like three years old and being taken like as a little bride looking girl and up to the altar. And then they're doing that there with her. They're fracturing her mind more through, um, through having sex, you know, and yeah. then at a, at three years old. And then, so that happens throughout. She's passed around all around town in that town, wherever she grew up at. So, and then she would be take, she would be sent off to, um, whoever else, you know, for different programming all her life she's sent. And if he's like Naval, is he in the Navy or something or like a ship or what's your, what it was her stepdad? Um, he, uh, see my mom would have got it probably at about age four or five. I, I think that's when her father passed away. Um, but he was actually a very well to do, uh, he did made a plate glass but he had a very well-paying job for life due to a disability that happened on site so money <laughs> and reality was never really an object for him 
But I mean, I've always, I'm talking I've about always, her stepdad, her stepdad, your mother's stepdad. My mother's stepdad worked mm -hmm. in a glass plant, right? Oh, okay, but so he, mm -hmm. he he lost two fingers in an industrial accident, so they paid him for a job for the rest of his life and very, very well to okay. not have to go through compensation. So money was no object. The guy thought he was invincible, okay. right? And I always thought he was put into her life in a handler position. Because that set her up for my father, who was a drug addict, biker, like just okay. total depravity, kind of kept her in the same cycle. So who is in the military then with her her side of the, the men? Um, nobody was in the military on her side, but my father's side, my grandfather was in the military. Your grandfather, so her dad? No, her, her father-in-law. Her, fa her father-in-law. Yeah, like my father's father. Like my grandfather. Okay. Yeah. So that's... So that's... But, oh, yeah. She could have been definitely watched because that was a very small town heavily populated by the military. Okay. So so the, the male figure that's in the military, that that's her grandpa grandfather? No, that's my father's father. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got you I, now. So you didn't know so he she didn't know him then. She that that that's later on then. So yeah. that's a different gen line. So the the person that's that's raised her is also the that's like a cover, you know, like that job and stuff like that. That would be like a cover or something in that way. So she would be abused though, like through however and the, because they they have different kinds of jobs and stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. They like they put them in different kinds of jobs, but so so she's raised and done that. The, I don't know if she has any memory of that though, but that's what I'm seeing that happened to her when she's growing up is being abused in like places like this. Yeah, I don't know. Well, if... it would absolutely make sense because he was a sick fuck, and it would make sense that he would be involved in stuff like that because he truly thought he was untouchable. Right. But she I, didn't, I, she didn't know him yet though. Right. This is your, this is your dad's side. This is your dad. So like when she's little, oh, she doesn't know him yet. No. Okay. I was so, talking about stepdad. Yeah. So the, so, so then when she's growing up though, cause it's, it's generation, she's bred for that for the program you know it's in it's in her dna to be bred for this and then so they pair her up with her mates they 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 are they they find them who else is going to be um the same programming because you don't want anyone that doesn't understand or know you know or isn't mind fractured as well because he's going to have to take her to places to be traumatized still your your stepdad your yeah. her so he's going to hmm her stepdad yeah i get it yeah yeah, yeah. and and so it's kind of hard to follow with all the stepdad stuff <laughs> so 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 anyway the when she's grown up then she's followed and looked at like and in high school and stuff because then she's pulled out of school and also she's taken to different um people like prominent people in the community would that make sense yep that and absolutely then, so she's she's like pimped out almost in that way you know yeah um, she, when uh my biological father pulled her into a biker organization oh they okay because that's kind of like freemasonry cult or whatever it's like that kind of yep. thing you know to where where they would be passed around um or or women or there's lots of different different abuses going on it's mostly just going to be through doing saying blackmail stuff too you know and and things that are on that are on the record and uh, like blackmail um like setting her up to go and and being recorded, you know, with someone, and then they use that against that person, saying, "I'm going to show your wife these pictures if you don't, you know, give us whatever we want," you know, 
And that's, that's kind of how she was utilized. So she, I, I keep seeing like these CIA guys, like in the eighties looking car, like the Oldsmobile car and how they would look in the seventies and eighties, you know, looking like how they're, the guys looked in the suits and stuff, you know, like that, like George Bush senior in the seventies and eighties, how they dressed. I keep yeah. on seeing those kinds of guys that followed her and then they would cut her off when she's walking home from school and she would have to get in the car with them and then they're taking her to places, you know? So that's kind of what will go on too. And then, so they're setting her up. She's having to do that a lot. So her whole life, she's been abused, you know? So that's, so then they also, they also uh, introduced these drugs to them too, you know? So then she can get hooked on that and they can just blame it on the drugs instead of her memory. Like she's just, she's just a druggie she won't remember yeah. or she's just a druggie she don't believe her you know she's just losing it you know so that's what they do so that's why she's uh that's why she's she because i don't think she did drugs like they i think they gave them to her or something and it made her forget or not feel the pain that she felt you know from all the abuse growing up so yeah. yeah, I just want to touch on something there that you were saying, because you're absolutely right. The CIA did give North America its drug problem. Like when you think about what happened after the Vietnam War and all of the heavy drugs that came into North America and all of a sudden all of the plant medicines started to disappear. Like people were on mushrooms and smoking copious amounts of marijuana. And then all of a sudden it was speed and heroin and cocaine. Mm -hmm. Where did those come from? Those were yeah. all coming from three letter organizations that injected yeah. them in society to destroy us exactly. and to be able to mask programs like this. Exactly what you're saying. You get yeah. your citizens on it in a basically a retarded state and you can use them for any program you want because nobody believes them. Right. Mm hmm. Definitely. So. And so then so so then your stepdad then or you, is that your stepdad or your real dad is the biker? My your, real father. Is, yeah. Real father is the biker. And but you said he's a sick fuck or whatever. Is that what you said or no? Oh, yeah. Or, he's an abusive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sadistic. Yeah. Sadistic. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. He's very mean to her. Like, I don't know if he, are they, is he still alive or no? Yeah. And then, so does she still see him? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, they have been divorced since I was three. Oh, okay. And he was one of those dudes that thought he was Mike Tyson if you were a woman or a kid. Yeah, because he's like a super soldier person, but he's like, uh, you know, he's just... Uh, born into it too in a way I think or well yeah um, his dad military yeah see he's different type of uh, uh, trauma because he's more of the torture trauma and doing things to make him like uh, shocking him waterboarding like taking him to doing those things for mind programming you know um, for yeah. for programming for doing certain things maybe he still might even be programmed and be because it seems like he was more electronically like by tone and stuff programmed to like he's the i think it's still in his body you know like in his mind these these programs so he they could call him and say a code or whatever and then or, or tone or whatever and then he will he will switch and go do the assassin work or whatever it is like that's kind of and then they put him back and then he's just a biker that's an asshole you know so then that's kind of his cover too you know yeah no that actually makes sense yeah so then you come along and then so you're how you how you came was seems to be um I I think that I can't find you right now. Like it, like, it just seems like, seems like you were not, I don't know if, I don't know if she even knew who, seems like you were, she was taken to military base or something and, and planted with the DNA. But for the super soldier, like, 
this aspect of you. It mm. wouldn't surprise me. Because I'm talking about this reality. You know, you talk about like future stuff and come back, but this is, I, I don't know, that that's true. That's another aspect of you because you, we have so many, you know. So this this one, though, in these programs that the mother is is uh, pregnant and then they give birth, but it's a difficult birth, then that's there's something to that. Like it's not like you're, you... I keep thinking ain't angelic, like, and it's not her frequency. So she's rejecting the baby because, um, you, you know, you're not the same frequency, um, because she, she has that low frequency because of the drugs and the things that's come into her because of the drugs, you know? So you, I think, I think that you decided to come in to save her or something like that, to save her, her, um, um the the whole i don't think it's your stepdad but her so i don't know do you have a close connection with your mother yeah her and i are very very close okay uh, so this is why then that you decided to come in then because i don't think that you uh, it didn't seem like you planned or wanted to come here you know like that and um like sh uh, i don't know and I think that you decided to come here to save her from all of, to help raise her vibration up and save her, rescue her from the trauma, the loop that she, the family trauma that's continuous, but you stopped it by coming here because it would have continued on if she would have had like a, a normal pregnancy, a normal kid. It, the trauma would have continued on generations, you know, yeah. but you came here and you stopped it because of your genetics, your angelic DNA. Um, you know, you, you are stopping it. So she, she's being forced to stop doing the drugs and doing all these things and, you know, divorcing him and getting out of it because of you. So if yeah. you didn't come, then she would not have done any of that. She would have continued on because he had her mind programmed, but you, your frequency broke her program. So, yeah. That yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So you save, you saved the family. You're, you know how they say the, the, the generational trauma, like we're here to break the curse or a family trauma. So you're here, you broke the curse or you broke the generational trauma. So, oh, wow. but, but were you, you wasn't abused, were you? You wasn't like here in this reality, were you like yeah. sexually abused uh, by your stepdad? Uh, not by my stepdad, by my grandfather. By like, your grandpa. Okay. So it and, was still occurring. And physically abused by my father. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, you know you you come here but you're you still have you have this much to you know like she had like this much to deal with and then you just have this much you still but like if you have kids uh do you have kids you're like you, it don't it won't happen it stops with you you know like that it stops it stops with you so you took on a little bit more but you you've fought it like it doesn't happen now you know then yeah. you put a stop to it, but it would have continued on, you know, if, yep. if you wouldn't have come here, then it would have continued. So, so yeah, that's, yep. that's what I get there for you. And then, so like the reptilians taking you out of the, that, that seemed to be, that seemed to be the positive then, right? Did you see they, yep. they were positive? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you said you would have died. Yeah. They were helping yeah. me because what they had injected with me with when I was in utero and then what they had me on for like the, I can't remember it was six or eight weeks after my birth. They basically had me, you know, how like a lizard needs to be under a lamp, mm -hmm. right? They running me with the proper amount of proteins for the genetics to properly merge, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, again, I, I kind of toot Maya's horn here, like... I got an entire book unlocked in that section in that session because like there's my entire five and back 
that I did for high school while I was away that was mm. unlocked. I haven't even talked about yet, mm. but like that whole session basically unlocked an entire book and you're very close on what you're saying as well. Like a yeah. lot of what you're saying lines up on how it would have been set up for this to initially happen for the scenario to turn out that, yes, yeah, mm. okay. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's sort of a shared consciousness. Like, yes, they have fucked with me in this reality, right? Mm -hmm. I, You and I spoke about off camera and I'll say it. I've always had somnambulistic abilities. Like I can walk, talk, eat, rationalize. I can get you a drink if you ask me. Um, I I can be fully functional while asleep. Mm -hmm. And the <laughs> thing is, I found out during the session that they were using a type of V2K to get me to leave the house to make me easier to abduct, abduct for the fucking super soldier my lab shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And one time when I was like five, they took me for a couple of days and that's where they gave me my, my first information upgrade and my booster shot for the genetics. Right. Okay. And yep. yeah. And then they brought me back the next time was 15. And then when I came back from that, because that was five full years, I was still 15 here and I felt like I was 20 years old one morning and I just got home from school and looked at my mom and said I was leaving. Right. Oh. Because I, I literally had spent five years somewhere else. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of this is by the time I'm 15 years old here. Yeah. Right. So I'm already mm -hmm. like, I'm already 20 years old here. Mm -hmm. So right? then with the, with the taken out, you know, on the 20 and back, then, so you're living your life here and you're here, your angelic DNA, our angelic DNA is targeted, you know, by these groups because our angelic DNA holds the codes or keys or however that they are looking for, for these programs. Cause, um, and then they also like to steal our energy and stuff too. And, and, and our, in the things that are encoded in our DNA, you know, all of our, um, our, our ET DNA, you know, cause we like have multiple different Octarian, Syrian, Orion DNA, all the star family and stuff like that. We're not just from one group it's multiples um and then so so like when you're little when you're little in this reality then someone I, I think it's probably the grays or something came and like when you were five or so is that right when you're five were you taken by the grays or do you have yeah, that they, they look like bright men but yes i was taken mm -hmm. um the first time i remember seeing um i woke up to a bright light and i could hear something and it was telling me how to get out of the house, but I was still asleep. Right. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. so it's like telling me, like, don't sit up. So I would sit up and it's like, okay, stand up. And I'd stand up, put your slippers on, turn left, walk 23 paces to the stairs, turn right, go down the stairs. And it literally walked me out of my bedroom into the yard to where I saw what looked like a bright, like almost like liquid metal or mercury circle and two guys mm -hmm. standing in front of it. And they're like, just, okay, come with us. We know you can hear us. Come with yeah. us. Yeah. And we went through and that's when I got the upgrade. Yeah. So then you were taken and then they, they were fixing your DNA um, or just doing whatever they had to do then. And then, so your DNA, um, that could be your, the grays from the SSP um, or the grays from the, uh, tw you know, the 20 and back is the SSP or the super soldier. So it's kind of like they have all these, you have your DNAs here and then they would s trade it off or sell it off, whatever they do with our DNA, you know, or you're taken multiple times by different groups. So they see, they see you're, you are lit up when you come here, you know, like you're still like, that's, that's why they are interested in your DNA. So the grays would come and lead you out there. You're taken. And then they are, they are taking all these samples of you, of your DNA. So, and given they, they do all kinds of medical stuff then on you, you know, when you're, when you're like five and like the scan, they're scanning your energy and like 
they can replicate that your energy and clone you and use you in their own programs and sell any clones and stuff or trade or whatever they do with us, you know, with the clones in the gray, in the Zeta Reticuli programs. And then also taking another time when by the grace, but they would be like with the mantis, you know? So, cause I see that you would have like a praying mantis as, um, as it seems like the praying mantis is like a guide. Do you recall any praying mantis? As I a used guide? to keep pets as a kid. Yeah. So you have a, a you like them, you were kind of drawn to them. Like yeah. the praying mantis are really tall though. They usually don't, you might see them in your mind or something, or they could yeah. enter your room, but you wouldn't, they don't, they're higher vibration. Seems like that's your part of your star family like maybe the syrian or um andromedan or something like that there's a few the mantis they are kind of in charge of hybrid programs too in genetics so it seems like they would they the grace came and then or they came or the grace came so it just kind of works differently you know but they was kind of all c coming to take you to get your dna like the the praying mantis has grays that work for them as like robots, you know, they they're told to go and get you out. So that might have been them. And then the grays. So it's like multiple programs going on, but the they try to fix what the grays did. And then the grays tried to extract what they gave, you know, so there's like a battle of, of what's going on. They're trying to, to like they I don't know why they. They just keep messing with the, I think they just do it for the genetics, you know, because your genetics are highly sought after because of your, uh, your angelic DNA, your abilities, and you're utilized in these programs for your DNA, you know, because you have the angelic DNA is going to have all these abilities, the, all the psionic abilities and special stuff that we can do because um, most, most people who, who don't have that who aren't the angelic DNA, they, they don't have that, that psionic ability as strongly, you know, it's not, we, we like a, we like light up the room, you know, when, but normal people, they don't, they don't have any, we can recall this stuff and a lot of people, they don't recall, you know, so we're here to have full memory of stuff and help people wake up. You know, so they do everything to try to stop it, but nothing works and uh, nothing ever works as far as them trying to stop us in any way. We're always protected because we're angelic, you know, and we're always protected by our guides and guardians. We came here with like a whole team of people with us, you know, so they're always watching over us and making sure that we get through this, you know, so even though we're taken and utilized on all these other programs, it's something that we are sent here to do multiple things, not just like one thing with your mom, you're here to wake up humanity with whatever you want to do with whatever task you're here that you decided to take on. And then in other, other programs too, um, we're, we're used to, we have to wake up and, and see all these programs and then we then it seems like they come back to us they, when, once we realize that you know once we see it then it we integrate it you know like that even though maybe they're still existing in that reality a clone of us or um an altar or another aspect and because it goes on and on you know the the timelines the it's like quantum quantum realities yeah. It, we like exist in so many places it you know we would we can't there's just not even any way of reaching some of those aspects of us because they're so far out but we can around this area you know that we can figure out and see and someone else helps us see and discover you know then we can see that because in but a lot of people who don't have the special dna they they don't they're like i don't I don't see nothing, you know, I don't feel nothing, see nothing, hear nothing. They're like turned off, you know? Yeah. So, but we was turned on. We've always been turned on the, from the start. There's, it's never been off. They've tried to turn it off 
and we've we've been pushed down but it doesn't work nothing they can't get it I, to where we stop i think you're right and i i think what you're describing is like perception of density because like there's certain things we know goes on around us and most n normal people are like what the fuck are you talking about yeah and like no this is really going on like mm -hmm. these aren't just memes they aren't just silly things we talk about um yeah. something I, I wanted to ask your opinion on and spin is wandering around in the background too the one morning we woke up with matching injection marks and you know mm -hmm. where they put the IV in the hospital to knock you out, like right here in that yeah. vein? Mm -hmm. We had matching injection marks on our hands on the same day. Like it wasn't even like like we went for a smoke and we both kind of looked down and went, what the fuck is that? And we both had the exact same injection mark where they put it when you go to sleep. Oh, so were you, had you been talking about anything prior to that or like, can you recall what you had been doing or anything like that before? Or do you, do you know? Yeah. Um, we had actually had an incident before that. It was um, the lunar eclipse. It basically, and this was an experience we all shared. It basically sounded like the whole top of the trailer was a Ziploc container and all of the air got sucked out of it. And that's what all of us woke up to. Like it was this huge back whoosh, right? Like you and were abducted. It, mm -hmm. And it was like this fresh oxygen. Like, you know, when you have an oxygen mask on in a plane or in an operating room and it's just that pure oxygen, it's like mountain air. That's what it tasted like for about the first two breaths when we all came back to, right? And it's like, at first we thought it was just me and Spin, and then in the morning we were talking to Ray and he's like, you guys heard that too? Like we honestly thought there was an earthquake or something. A tornado. Whole, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and the whole, the whole thing was like the whole house got abducted and yes. like her and I had matching injection marks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Right. So, and did you feel, how did you feel like when you woke up, did you feel groggy or uh, what? very mellow like not lethargic not tired just it honestly felt like i had been on vacation mm. right so like, it well, seems like it was like a a positive abduction then you know like yeah, they it, i mean they if there is such a thing as a positive they can be like a positive um you know like your star family or something coming to give you upgrades or take you out to do that when that was going on um, maybe they could come through the portal or whatever around that time or something with the with the solar eclipse um, or lunar eclipse, whatever it was. And well, yeah, I've, like I've actually I've actually told this story before on other shows about the day I was driving to go get Spinja and like something blinked in the left side of me while I was driving. And, you know, a normal reaction to seeing a UFO would be, what's that? And mine was, yeah. not again. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I was two minutes down the road and at my turn. And I was just an irritable asshole for like oh. two days. Oh, no. And I, I just ended up having another dream supposedly mm -hmm. and it was the arcturians were like look we were trying to give you something about this energy project we want you to work on later but we screwed up your time by a couple of minutes i'm like do you know what you just did in that density like do you know what you did because you took me out of this density to give me the information that I'm going to need later, but you screwed up when you put me back. And they've actually been very good about it. Like, I know I get taken all the time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For but, the, for missions. Yeah. And like, I, I've, I've agreed to it. I, I get it. Like mm -hmm. the, it's obviously unnecessary, but like, it's when they bugger up my time or drop me off the bed or whatever. Like, I've woken up with bumps and bruises. I've woken up with injection marks. I've woken up with handprints. I, it's um the one time I actually woke up with a new scar on my nose. And then I remembered getting blown up mm -hmm. while I went for a nap. Right? Yeah. 
mm-hmm. in, in the time frame of a nap, I got blown up, put back together and sent back. And it was so fresh that the scar actually showed on my physical body in this reality. That's done. So you, you see it. So you can see that something is going on. Like I just took a nap and now I have this scar, this, this scratch on my face. And I know nothing was in that room, not no animal, nothing. And I didn't scratch myself or anything. So where, where, where did this come from? You know, so that's kind of something, or if you are dropped in the floor, why am I dropped on the floor for? I was sleeping or sleepwalking or whatever you're doing is done. So you question it. So, you know, and then once you, I could think once you start kind of catching on, then they might still do it, but I think they do it just so you, you know, something happened too, but and I don't, it just seems uh, uh, kind of funny that the Octurians can mess up time when they're so high density, like that. I didn't think that they would make mistakes, you know? So that was- that was what I had explained to me. They were incredibly apolo- apologetic. Like, they're not overly emotional, but they're very logical. That They're like, look, we mm-hmm. rushed to get you back because you were driving. It was a mistake. They slotted me wrong in time by, like, two minutes. Like, it was like, okay, it's this minute, and somebody hit the wrong button or mm. hit the wrong yeah. instruction or whatever it was. But when they slotted me back into time, they missed it by two minutes. And... My physical form had processed the two minutes here on Earth without me. I see. So then and you were catching up like you were irritated because your energy was still all di- like dissipated or something. Yes, it it wasn't in the right framing, right? Like I yeah. was here, here, like it. And then after I went to sleep and had that experience where they were explaining it to me, I felt fine and I was completely apologetic. Like I was an asshole to my dogs. Like yeah. You know, I, like I just wanted nothing to do with anything. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. As soon as I had that happen, I was like, "Oh my god! Like you guys can't do that. Like that messes people up." Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, and I could see like you, um, like with the super soldier stuff. What are some of the places that you resonate with going to as a super soldier, as being taken, um, you know, and utilized in the SSP, like through the uh, like when you were young, then you, what do you do? Remember when you were young, having to participate in with the SSP? Um, for the most part, um, I would say, like, like I said, when I was 15, I literally just got back my entire SSP um, high school memories, like of the five years that I was gone there. And it was a very unusual I call it the Academy <clears throat> and it functions much like a normal high school, but then there's the SSP aspects of it. Like they have the regen tanks, they have the military training, they have the close quarter combat, they have the non-human combat where like you have to fight an animal. They never quite let you die and then they'll put you in the regen tank, but it's a, basically a form of sadistic torture. Like this is supposed mm-hmm. to be a high school program, but they're teaching you how to like suck the venom out of your own skin after you've been bit by a cobra like 15 times just as you're about to die they pull you out and put you in a tank and that's that day's class right Mm. and you gotta think of how you how old you are when you start high school like you're still very sensitive like this is the most recent one that i'm going to be speaking about is like all of the like intensive training that they they put children through like it's a it's exactly like even the one that i was agreeable to like the most recent program that i can remember the one i'm going to be writing about it, it it's one that i'm agreeable to but it's an absolutely horrible program and it, it literally is nightmare fuel that's how we got here that's why we even know each other is because of a succession of nightmares based on the program that they basically took me out of time for five years and gave me a high school education and then put me back and expected me to be 15 again. I see. Right. So they didn't age regress you. They didn't like they, I literally just got all of this back. Like they regressed me 
But what Maya just unlocked for me is that entire five year span that was okay. just showing up as nightmares. Oh, right. Okay. I'd, yeah. I'd get a blip of a nightmare. Well, what Maya did in the last hypnosis session when she put me back in the period, I think it was the second door. She puts me into the second door and I'm in like, I'm about 15 years old out at my mom's house and they get me through V2K again by sleepwalking. And I go up to the end of the road and it's the same thing with the bright, shiny shit. And we walk through and now I'm actually in high school. They're like, look, you're here for five years. You're going to have to learn a lot, blah, 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 blah. And then I just proceed to live at the school for five years. And then they're like, OK, you're, you're all done with this. Now you go through this and it's literally the reverse portal to come back. And it's like, holy shit, I'm 15 again. Yeah. Right? So I'm then you the remember. So when you went into the when you went into that down the road through this through the portal thing and then so what did you experience then when you were when you were gone for that time frame? Um, like I was saying, like it's it's basically like if you were to live in any type of academy style school, but it's mm -hmm. very very militant. Like okay. you know there is very clicks, and if you're like the freshman, your freshman year. Right. You're the one who gets the shit kicked out of you. You're the one who gets like soap socked in your fucking bunk. If you don't know what soap socked is, it's you take a literal bar of soap. You get two other guys to hold them down to the bed and they proceed to beat you like three quarters of the way to oh, death. Wow. With a bar of soap. They do my it. In pretty, right. Oh, um, like Just absolutely ridiculous forms of abuse that are considered just hazing because it's in the program right mm -hmm. like they, they do treat it like a military academy okay right? so do you remember this um do you remember when you're set the way you taken ever in um because they're fracturing your mind with the until you till you still trying to split your mind you know um with that and then so do you remember ever going to like a room and then you're sitting in the chair and then they put the the headset or something on your head to for more programming and then they're giving you codes or ting like as uh, the sounds like frequencies you know like they how they do you know how that gateway um how the tones sound like yeah like that and yeah it's going through. Um yeah, the first time they actually did that to me, that's what I was talking about when I was five. Um, they hooked uh, like diodes up to the side of my head mm -hmm. and it it was so much information. It almost felt like electrocution because yeah, it was torture. just this overwhelming amount of like how to fight, how to kill, how to survive, how to eat, yep. what to do. Like you just knew everything and how to build this, where to go, like these are the coordinates for this. Like I'm still, I, I still get them and I'm still unlocking them. And it, it yeah. I, yeah. They, they, um, with, yes. with that stuff, there, it seems like a lot of us get that all these, all these images all at once, like they're all going all at once. And it's, I think that's made to, to, for, for, I don't know if it's Trump because we're like zoned out. So I think it's programming all these different things or toning, or attuning or just giving us all these messages and stuff and but it is some kind of a program happening because it seems like they have us tune into like a few of them you know and look at them but they're all kind of wasn't it all like bad like some of it was bad some of it was good some of it was like the earth blown up or anything like that was that some of the stuff oh yeah like that's exactly what you're training for is like the whole section of my training that comes to fruition is further in the future but it still has to do with my existence here because mm -hmm. once the firmament like um not the firmament the frequency shield goes down a lot of things are going to change including our abilities to transition between densities right so we're going to be able to go exist beyond this density and be able to return back to the third density to help earth mm -hmm. right and that's how you you basically time travel but you go to a, a density where time doesn't even exist and it's the absolute best well you can make whatever you want mm -hmm. through your conscious awareness and your conscious being because that's what you're existing in and then that can shift back to this third density to return to earth 
And that's all of the shit that I saw was like when I was fighting reptilians and I'd get killed a bunch of times because like the new settlements on the new earth that have made the agreement to live within the earth, not on top of it. Like that's the whole reset, right? Is you're going to have to like be of the earth. Mm -hmm. Right. So we come back in the one program that I'm talking about, we come back from like 2200 and just shift back to defend the people living in the third density against mm. things from higher densities. So you 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 came back into this spot, you'll come back into this body or you, you yeah you like will a, a, later. A reasonable facsimile of this body. Like it's exactly what you were describing about how like I could shape shift. We all get these bodies that'll exist here because like okay when yeah. we go back to being of the earth, okay, you know how you read in older texts how we used to live five to seven hundred years. Mm -hmm. That's the way it actually is. And you can basically go into a form of stasis and exist in a different density for as mm -hmm. long as you want. And right. then you can slide back to this density and resume your life here. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you have shit to do over here, you can Right. Right. Because you have that five to seven hundred years, you're no longer con like confined by the frequency fence. And that's what that's what mutes all of our abilities to be able to transition through these densities. Right. Right. Is the frequency fence that's around this part of the planet. So that won't exist then when later on when when you're like that's already been taken down like that whole yeah. like a grid like the Earth grid or so. Is that yes, what, exactly. like that kind of thing, like the earthquake? Yeah, it, so, it's what mutes all of our abilities, and that's what they actually train you for in the super soldier program that I'm talking about, is they teach you how to be hyper aware. I actually got in trouble. I, I might cut a lot of this out because I'm basically giving away my book here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, well, we can skip over that then. Don't I wouldn't give away the book part of it then. Let's let's you want me to show you the cards can i do that yeah yeah okay let's do that yeah okay. sometimes sometimes you want to keep those things to yourself yeah. you know because okay so this I this, this is too. I, I think i'll just leave that at that yeah what that that i just got in trouble one time and i mean in real life for what what do you mean Something like they gave me oh, okay okay yeah yeah so they probably gave you that information for the book too, so you don't want to just give it away, you know, like that. So, okay, so now this is going to be. Can you see? You're faded out. Okay, so tell me if you see the. Can you read yeah. it? So this. I can so sit, sit in the sun. These are your messages. <clears throat> Crow magic. You have a connection okay. with the crows? I actually have a pet my magpie. <laughs> okay. And do those symbols have any meaning? Hold on, there's something. Yeah, uh, the one on the left looks familiar from something about Maya. And the other, the one on the right makes something in my brain feel weird, to be honest. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Like a download, you know? See, so this is yeah, for downloads. Activate. Boots on the ground. Like boots on the ground. The, yeah. Just like warriors here, you know? And the LOC, do you know what that is? Like in space, the LOC, Lunar Operation Command Base. Have you heard yeah. that? Yeah, I've heard of that. What do you, what do you think of that? Uh, <laughs> We were helping rewire it in one of the sessions that I had with Maya. Oh, wow. Like, okay. So that's confirmation. This is confirmation for you that you, that, that is, you know what I mean? Like, this is just confirmation for you that you did do that. You know what I mean? That you went there and all of that. So, yeah. <laughs> and then this is going to an underground base in Astral. Yep. That would be my first hypnosis session with Maya. Okay. I went to an under ocean base, but yes, it was. Oh, ocean base. Hmm. And then this is SSP fractured um, 
um, on an individual soul's essence into soul fragments by utilizing extreme torture tactics. So that that happened, of course. Yeah. And empath, definitely, one hundred percent. Oh, what about this lady? Have you seen the, her before? The head and face looks familiar, yeah. The red hair super soldier lady? Yeah. Like, the top of my head is buzzing right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you so, just activated something. Yeah, something familiar, huh? Tall Grace. Yeah, they love me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... Trauma bonding. Yep. Nikola Tesla connection. <laughs> I love Tesla. <laughs> you saw me just pick these out too, right? <laughs> Montauk. Before. I haven't gotten into that yet, but it would not surprise me because I know I'm in several programs. 100%. Yes. You ought to ask about looking into that, you know, if you want to. This is stand by, stand on your own two feet. Like you, you're standing up for yourself, doing, fighting your own fight, like all that. <laughs> That's about right. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Don't hold back. Yeah. I never, I hadn't drawn these before. Those, those are new ones that I wanted to put in there for motivation. So, what about the two, two, two? Oh, I see sequence numbers all the time like that. Mm hmm. Advanced ET genetics. <laughs> yep. Dragon Guardian. I actually, yes, I do. White. Yes, I have a white one. Project Ibis, what I say about the queen? Yeah. Well, yeah, and that would make sense because I'm Canadian, so. Mm -hmm. And here you go, Archangel. Archangel DNA. Yeah, that would be Gabriel. Gabriel. Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> Supernatural interest. Yes. From a very young age. My lab super soldiers created with your DNA. So clones of you. I have seen a lot of people that look like me. I, I can confirm. I, I make the comparison all the time. If you ever take a side by side of me and Tony Rodriguez. Uh huh. Some of it, the, yeah. It's very. I'll, I'll show like, you on Facebook sometime. It's insane. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I noticed that a lot of a lot of the people kind of do that. They kind of look similar, huh? You know. Yeah. And what about mystic, mystic, mystics, and mysticism? Are you, do you have interest oh, in those always, topics? Yeah. Yeah. Andromedan jump room. That would make sense. I, um, the one time I was with Maya, she was explaining how you interdimensionally travel. And it was through basically jump gates. Mm -hmm. So go from yeah. like star to star and it works as a jump gate. So that would right. make sense. Yeah. And then the last one is your psi abilities. Yes. Yeah. Can confirm. So see uh, how accurate that was tuning in to you. That was amazing. Yeah. The, the, the interview that I did earlier um, she suggested that I start doing readings for people and because um, that will assist them in looking at more things within themselves or confirmation. And that'll be a good way for me to generate some income as well. You know, so that I, that's a good idea. Yeah, I would fully support that. Like, I think that was a pretty dead on accurate reading. Like, and yeah. I, I love that we're all coming into these abilities and we're all expressing them because like, that's one of the things that they've tricked us into not doing. Like, you know, people in Rob's audience often talk like I'm actually going to have a uh, Shiba Winu or Jessica, whatever, yeah. 
uh-huh. on uh, the Tainted Tea. And like she is a steadfast audience participant of Rob's show, but she has such an amazing story too. Yeah. Like, and some of these people are too shy to even ask about telling their story or sharing a story or like, you know, showing a new ability, like Spinja is learning to read uh, tarot cards. Yeah. Your reading right there was just amazing. Like some of the things you were so accurate on. And I mm-hmm. love that these things are just all offshooting. And I know Rob's trying to ramp up an entire network too. Mm-hmm. So I, I think yeah. this will probably end up on that as well, as long as we kept it clean enough. Um, yeah. The lady like, that, that you said, Jessica, <laughs> um, then she, I had helped her. She asked me if I've seen her or ask. She kind of was asking more about it, you know, like um, her, I think she was asking about, I forgot the question. It was a while ago, and then so I, a whole lot opened up in the vision. In the vision, so I shared all of this with her, and you know that that helped her a lot. I feel you know with, um, uh, and I saw like she has a bunch of cats around her too. You know, like cat people and stuff. Um, but but yeah, so that that helped her a whole bunch. I um. I think I think when I do this, then it helps with healing because I, you know, I'm I'm a Karuna Reiki practitioner, and um, so I know that that energy goes into when I'm talking, and you know, because the symbols are in my auric field, you know, so they're gonna come out through my writing, through my speaking, through whatever I'm sharing, you know, and then so that that's a good way for me to help with the healing is through talking with people, you know, and just kind of talking about what they went through or helping if they have a vision of something and or need help looking then um you know I feel like I can help as much as I can you know if I can see it if it's super soldier stuff I can see it but if it's if it's like um that the Anunnaki stuff or things like that some things I don't know very much about because I don't have that memory of it you know yeah so well no exactly exactly like we're all just getting to the point where we're just starting to unlock things like sometimes you'll just be like like it was like the episode i did with rob i just woke up and knew all of these military locations and oh. then i went to google earth and i was like oh my god these are real right and i even found like a space force base i was like what the hell this is actually real like how do i know this i found like here in canada in british columbia there's uh mount douglas and I, I've never even been there, but I knew there was a World War II underground base there, and I looked but, it up, and sure enough, there was. Yeah, like that was given to you, you know that that information was given to you to share, you know what I mean? So, like for you yeah. to to share, like, I think that that got like the like give this to him and then you're like okay you know and don't ask me how I know this but I know it you know and I'm searching until wherever they tell like it was like a stream of information coming in you wasn't gonna stop until you got it out you know like you had to like on a mission to get all this stuff you know to so so yeah yeah actually up until the point like spin started to worry about my mental health because it i was down the ssp rabbit hole for a long time Mm -hmm. and for myself and i can't tell everybody to do this like you have to live your own life and have your own journey what got me out of being I, I love the SSP. I think some of like it's one of the most healing things. Like I, I listen to guys like Arkeem Rob Ra and uh all of those people and they tell these stories, but it's so healing because they're getting it out. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. Arkeem is the reason I even ever contacted Rob. Right. Oh. Okay. Um, I I had the succession of nightmares, and then Spin was like, "Look, you need to watch something," because they would not stop. It was just relentless, and I was dying over and over and over and over and over, and it was just horrible, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And she's like, "You need to watch something," and she showed me an episode of Typical Skeptic. I didn't even watch podcasts a year ago, mm-hmm. much less be on one, mm-hmm. right? And by the time I was done listening to Arakeem, I was just in tears. And she's like, that's it, isn't it? I'm like, it's a lot like that because I could see what Arakeem was talking about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And 
with the passion I, I connected to him through our energy like and it was just insane that I contacted Rob like that day mm. and then that's when Maya put me under regression like a few weeks later and all of that but yeah it, it it's just amazing that we're all getting memories back we're all getting abilities back like we're all figuring this out and that's exactly what we need to do yeah and it helps us grow much faster you know like to when we're all together too the frequencies are like tuning in to the whole to the whole song you know like it's a whole song and then everybody has their own things that they bring into the song you know so so well, yeah i think i think that that is in the all the people that are on there like as the moderators and stuff uh, most of them um as well have you know they just are kind of shy you know a little bit so maybe yeah. they will later though if they see like I know that I've helped a lot of girls by just being vulnerable and sharing my experience with some of the stuff that's not easy to even talk about because it's like like you know and and it gives me anxiety but people feel that you know like dang who who would make that up anyway nobody you know like nobody's gonna make that up you know why would you make it up you know so they kind of and then maybe something else I would say that's relatable or oh that sounds familiar you know with being like in in a in a psych ward an abandoned psych ward and you're young and then you have George Bush senior come in and do the trauma traumatizing you know with all these torture things and then you know, then you're sent out on honey pots to do the to the to the blackmail, you know, when I'm like in the beginning of the SSP stuff. And, you know, I'm I'm just being programmed and even programmed by Alistair Crawley to be able to have uh, the different I guess it's a frequency or some sort that would um help me to shape shift into like a werewolf because um or lichen or however that is, you know, cause we talked about that, about seeing that like in the, in the water or something like that, you know, cause I think yeah. that that, I think that they do that just to, to program, to, to make those. And then they just release them or something. I don't know what happens with that. If they're military dog men, cause I know that they are military dog men that they use to go in and take out things. <sighs> My dog started barking outside even just then. Um, but, but so, um, and then, and then, you know, so after like the, my, my, like when I was, they, they was passing me around to different places to do like the blackmail, uh, um, psionic abilities using to assassinate with my, uh, with aneurysms. They, I could do that when, even at Montauk, they, they were having me, Arkeem, he was older when I was at Montauk. He was one of the older people there, and Joseph Powell was. And um, so both of them have a lot of, um, they were a big part of my, it seems like the the Montauk part was um, most, most relevant, it seems like, here. It seems like that, because I feel really close to both of them, like they're my family, you know. Um, but they were older than me. I was like seven when I was there. And then they was like 17 and they didn't abuse me like sexually, nothing like that. But they did through the sending me through the Stargates, sending me as a spy assassin or honeypot assassin, um, doing all these things, you know, um, for um, utilizing the kids psionic abilities is what they do. And then um, and then our though, at montauk then he would he could scream like out really loud he he could scream out he would scream all the time he was always mad at the kids because he had to do everything because none of the other guys it was max spears and uh joseph powell and then james rink and arkeem and um they all have altars there you know and so when i remembered I heard Arkeem talking about it, altars or something. And then that made me remember Montauk time when I was like a little kid and being like in a cage, being taken in a cage. And then I could describe, I was remote viewing, being like in the basement area there and kept in a cage. And then I saw Angie Dollar, you know, and then I told her about it. So then we could kind of compare 
like that way. But but I was I was seeing that um Arkeem was um he would always have to come down there. It's like in the very bottom basement area of Montauk. Um and we was we were hungry or they needed to let us out to go to the bathroom, but most of the time they just they just didn't we just had to stay in that and you know they forgot about us or they just didn't feel like it because they're teenage guys teenage kids you know um yeah. so they don't they they're just like uh, uh it's not my turn you know or whatever like they don't unless they needed us to go on a mission and do stuff then they kind of just left us down there unless we had to eat and then they go down we had to go and eat you know and all that but, yeah. but they didn't like having to go down and babysit basically um and then so I had a full recall of all this different stuff and made an audio of it. And then Arkeem listened to it and he was like, holy shit, you know? And then he said, I remember you. And then, so he, he, he also show. I drew it out. Like I, I watched Joseph Powell on, on Rob's show. Um, and then I had like even more recall of seeing him and he had to abuse me there for Preston's, uh, asked told him to abuse me make videos and um all this so i had all this recall of joseph powell and then i had it all draw i drew it all out like who does that who has that's a download opening like your book you know and so you have to do it then so it's like because it's like a stream of it you know so like don't put it off don't do something else just sit there and do that until till you need to take a break and come back or whatever till you feel it activate again you know um but like i i showed arkeem what i drew and then so he showed he asked if it was okay if I, he showed joseph and i said okay of course you know and then joseph remembered my name there he said that that is raylene my name is raylene at the at montauk and i had no idea my name at all and even that he would even recall that you know recall me there and he remembered me so i was like holy fuck this is like this is unbelievable am i like this i can't like blow my mind you know that i even remembered all of that and that's and he he confirmed like because joseph powell remembers everything like he's like he's wide open you know for memory and he recalled all of it. He confirmed it. And I was like, oh, this is this. I I like having confirmation because I'm just like, that's good. You know, that helps me know that I'm what I'm seeing is accurate and trust my own um, intuition and my my memories of things and the visions that I get from when other people are talking. Then, you know, that's why I share it, you know, so um because most likely more than anything it's it's something that you'll resonate with because it just doesn't come to you for no reason you know so so yeah that was montauk part but then the, and that's out of a different reality like a pocket reality montauk is um it's yeah. not the 20 and back but it did start with being at ibis and traumatized at ibis and then we were sent to montauk so i think that you might have been because you're born in 77 right we're yeah. 70, and i'm born in 76 and spinja was born in 77 right so so i don't know if she was part of montauk or not i don't i, I haven't um like done a scan on her to see like any or she hasn't said look at this or anything so until someone gives me permission to do that, I usually just don't don't do um, that. Yeah. You know, she just waved and said, "Go ahead." But uh, just FYI, she's had George in one of her dreams. Oh, she, okay. Junior, sorry. Junior. Yeah. I mean, he probably was there too. You know, so I I would have to hear a few more things that she's she's yeah. seen. Or something like that, because I have to see something to connect me to that. You know what I mean? So um, we can do that off camera on another show, but yeah, yeah. whenever it's time, yeah. I'm... But um, that's something I wanted to get at too before we go, because we've been going over an hour now. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we were actually talking earlier today about starting a. Uh, we're gonna call it the one forty four four one one. 
right? It's going to be a page or a website. We're not entirely sure yet. We're just spitballing the idea of like, you know, you're a very gifted reader and very knowledgeable on the SSP. I am a podcast host. She is going to be hosting podcasts. Um, Rob hosts podcasts. He knows many readers. He knows paranormal people. I, I'm doing the interviews with Maya. Basically, mm -hmm. a network of a support. Like if somebody in the general public wants to contact one of us, we're just this Oh, network. yeah, good. That's Where a good idea. Like, I, I, yeah. I don't, that was my biggest downfall is like when I first woke up, I'm like, well, who the hell do I ask? I feel like I'm insane. Right. right? Exactly. So yeah. if there are people like us that are just readily available on a website or a Facebook page or Support whatever, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. But I just wanted to know if you were in, like Rob already yes. said, yeah, sure, yes, my most interest. Definitely. We'll get something like that going and we'll just call it the 144 411. Like we yeah. can act like a directory people. If you if you're too shy to come on a show and tell your story, I'll tell it for you and you can have somebody reach out to me and I'll relay it. I, I don't care. These people need the help. They need to be able to talk and they yeah. need to have the ability to be heard by the people who are going to get them. Yeah. And that is uh, one of the sometimes it helps if you have someone like um, like two people on, you know, like if it was someone who's kind of shy and then like me and then them, you know, then that kind of supports them. So they feel I can do this, you know, like that. So you just, you, it just, it just is something like that little of a, you know, cause it is at first when you're first on, then like you feel, I can't do this. I'm nervous. I can't do this. I don't know. I don't even know, you know, what a, you know, you just panic and stuff. So yeah. if you have someone with you that's kind of supporting you, you know, in that way, then that's in not asking a bunch of questions, just kind of, it, it's a calm thing, you know, like being like that. So just like that, the Jessica, um, who you was talking about or, um, or um, Selena, you know, um, yeah. any, there's there's quite a few that um I know that they have stories to tell, but they some of them don't 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 even know where to begin either because there's so much you know like exactly. where do I even start because I don't even know where to start. So having like that support group talking about it, then that would help them build build this build their in their mind. Oh, okay, yeah, you know, like you kind of build a a time frame or something like that. Because you kind of have to have that just just one 20 and back or just a five year or just something just to kind of build off of just to talk yeah. about it first. You know, you kind of need something like that. So like if, even if you can help somebody discover that they've been gone and back, then talk about it or if they have need a regression done, you know, um, yeah. but a lot of people, they don't have a whole lot of money. You know, a lot of us, we, we don't have any, we don't have that, that kind of money to do an expensive session of things, you know, like, yeah. like that. So I don't know. That, that is one place I will 110% shout out Maya. Um, she is very, very fair with her sessions. I'm not going to put our personal business out, but yeah. she willing to work with most anybody that mm -hmm. needs help that's she's one of the mainstays in the idea of even doing this 411 thing mm -hmm. because if i hadn't have ever made that connection i'd have probably ended up on medication yeah right right because you and, thought you was losing it yeah oh yeah like i thought my cheese was sliding off my cracker like i i've never been in anything in this reality beyond an air cadet and all of a sudden i'm wearing one of the most high-tech biomech suits running across walls smashing like 14 foot fucking lizards in the head yeah. and going the out. Mm. like what the hell did i yeah and then it, again and it happened again and it happened again and it happened again and like then it happened 10 times in one night and yeah, sometimes yeah. I, sometimes i do like I can literally remember thinking I was going to wake up with my teeth in my mouth because I could feel them crunching after I got my face smashed in with the butt of a rifle. Wow. But then I just woke up back here. Yeah. Right? 
mm-hmm. it, it, it's that kind of mixed reality that you know people need they do somebody to talk to and that was the hardest part that i had when i came into this reality was there nobody talks about it because everybody nobody. thinks they're, yeah it is very very the, very important i think to yeah to have very, someone to talk you, about there's the penny bradley's and the arkeem Ross and you know the aubrey walters or audrey sorry walters like that actually get out there and say something and i think I, I'm going to throw in a cheap prop here before we go for the full disclosure now movement, because we're yeah. going to be doing a whole bunch of uh, episodes on the mad chatter show. We're actually doing double episodes for the month of June, and it's going to be all speakers and presenters of oh, good. the disclosure now movement, including Laura Eisenhower, Arkeem Raw, uh, Brian Sang, uh, mm-hmm. my of course, Rob Khalil is going to be joining us and Audrey Walters as well. So, like, it, it, we're doing it specifically for this event because not enough people talk about it, and I really yeah. want to help. This. Yeah, I'm up in Canada. I can't get there because I ain't got that kind of cash right now. Right. But if mm-hmm. we can help push this out through our podcasts or the radio show, absolutely want to support yeah. this. So Definitely. I will actually put the link in the description for that as well. And how, how um, like, Brian, he's, like, he's so generous, you know? He's so generous with with his time and his the funding and but it mostly it's like he has he's like a librarian or a record keeper um person you know that's like a timekeeper you know that's here to to experience the all of this time and stuff but he's like keeping like a record of things you know um like a, a timekeeper or something like that you know like sealing it up and then like making new records and stuff you know of time to- of like books of, of of what's going on and stuff so like he has that mission to to collect all these people who in and get them to share because all these people have to be in this this book or these these things you know not a real book it's like a energetic you know to fit into this time and then he's he goes on to collect more people so he's always like collecting more stories and more people and all of that or more places and things or relics or he's always he just he's like collecting he's like a collector of of things you know and that's all to do with certain things so his mind is rapid as well you know and and all that and then i know um i had seen um I had seen him in an experience before he's, he says he's not like a super soldier or nothing like that. But I know that I had seen him in an experience when me and him were training with praying mantis. Um, and I don't know which reality or wherever we were, but it was like a dojo and the praying mantis was teaching us to like stick fight and do these things. We were raised there. We were like, little kids and then raised at this place and then we were the teachers and stuff too so so he's this is the we we have many different realities we exist in so it doesn't just have to be a super soldier he had he's been in other of my um memories of of the praying mantis and then also um a time when he was like an emperor and he was like sitting on the throne, like kind of like a Hugh Hefner kind of guy, you know, because he had these really nice looking ladies around him. And I remember I was one of those females and the, we all were like um, really young and, you know, vibrant or whatever, you know, however, however he wanted us to look, I guess, you know, um, but how I see it is like a young girl, you know, because um, he's he was probably like 24 five or not like 30 something like that in that reality and he had a whole kingdom of like the whole kingdom was his because it was like his mother's dynasty or something like that and his i know he said something about his dad was something with tesla but i think that his dad is like um an inventor and he like invented this whole city that they all live and exist in it's like a maybe like a free energy city or something like that is what I was kind of seeing. And his mom though, is like this dynasty queen. Um, 
like passed on the legacy to him and i don't think she was there anymore or she went somewhere to another place you know she wasn't there just he was and even his dad was already somewhere else i think they build cities or something like that you know like kingdoms because his it's like a whole squared out you know of, of brian's and he takes care of everybody in this whole entire kingdom city place that's in his that he he owns the whole thing and he he like everybody is taken care of even like the there's no like slaves there's just workers and then they're all taken care of like he does that's how generous he is even in that reality he's like that so it's like nobody nobody is um angry or anything like that everybody's happy and stuff so he's he's created that in some reality um so that's oh. how i think he's he's kind of maybe those people in that place are here too so that we can kind of remember how yeah. generous he is with with his with his compassion because he's very compassionate about stuff you know about some of the things you know and um he is he is a fighter like a warrior like a ninja like samurai ninja yeah. fighter you know like don't like he's you don't mess with him with that because i mean he he can slice you up you know in that way but it, well, it's so yeah so like uh, with the super soldier stuff i don't i mean i can see him suited up but i also see him like in a samurai suit too you know so he might be like a, an assassin someplace you know But what was she saying? Yeah, sorry. I was just double checking the boy there distracted me. Um Spin was like, yeah, he uses the term, but I think he used it uh on for Audrey about being galactic royalty. I think he is, and that absolutely bleeds through into this reality because like the first thing that guy tried to do was help me out with a place to stay and half off my admission to the event just so I, I could go. And yeah. get down there and like get to one of these events, even with that generous offer. Unfortunately, right now that's not in the cards. Mm -hmm. But yeah. this guy, he is an absolute advocate and blessing to this community. Yeah. Like he has brought me on to do some of the advertising. We're kind of one hand scratch and the other with the radio show. And like like it he is the type of person exactly what you're explaining about how he's getting all these people in the same page he's mm -hmm. writing the Kashuk records here in this density he mm -hmm. is putting the pages in order for the book to be make sense because once we all overlap and everybody sees the succession of events that all line up that's the disclosure yeah he, mm -hmm. he has a meticulous way of filtering out bullshit versus reality versus mm -hmm. fact and those are the people that he surrounds himself with are the ones that have a true reality to explain to the rest of us and that's where we'll actually get the disclosure and it's going to be from people like brian zang yeah and i did the i did a video with him on the cards before too you know like that i've done the video with him before like last year and like August or something of last year, I did that when I first met him because I saw him with Arkeem and going to Montauk and stuff. And then, so I think he saw my cards or something. So I did like a, I, I did the Reiki scan on him and uh, with permission. And then, so it synced our energy and then just drew the cards from there. And then those cards I showed on his channel, they're on his, on his YouTube channel. Um, not the disclosure, but the, his, uh honey his b his solar b uh yeah youtube be channel and um yeah so i mean i i can feel like a lot of love for him like i feel i feel his uh compassionate heart you know in everything that he does when he's helping people you know and so um and i know that he, and he forgives so easily too you know when things have been done wrong or said and then these people still hold grudges but he's like it just let's let it go you know yeah. and then they don't want to but he's like i can't force them to you know so he just he tries and that's that's all you can do is just 
you know, people have different altars and stuff too. So you just have to block that, block them, like yeah. physically block them from all platforms now and not talk to them because they're not even themselves anymore, you know? So yeah, I had to, not- I had, I had to do that, you know? People who've been your friends for the long, a, a long time, you know, and then they switch, you know. So it's I, um, the Mister Smith theory, or the Agent Smith theory. Sorry, you know mm-hmm. how uh, in the Matrix they can just pop in, Agent Smiths can just pop in. Well, yeah. that's the same thing. Like when you start talking to something, to some like one of them, that these comprehensions maybe they're not just supposed to know about it it's beyond their comprehension of the density right a Mm -hmm. agent will pop in and take over and all of a sudden they get very hostile or argumentative or up a reason to be angry at you it's a real phenomenon i I, i'm not going to go as far as saying Mm -hmm. the matrix is a documentary but there's a lot of fucking truth in the hidden Mm -hmm. in movie Mm -hmm. right yeah um but yes absolutely they can just pop in and turn something somebody against and you I, try to I hijack have... a whole movement as well you know send to hijack a whole movement of something where in turn people against each other by implanting not true stuff and yeah. this shouldn't like as soon as you hear something then your first reaction should be like huh because that was my first reaction and then then I have to find out for myself though. I have to see it and hear it. And I have to, I don't take somebody's word. Like don't eat that. Cause that will kill you. I'm like, well, I have to find out why. I mean, I'm not going to eat it, but I'll need to know why. Can you tell me why? Or, you know, like something I have to find out for myself. And that's how I learn, you know, yeah. that way. So, and I did, I seen it firsthand, you know, and then I, then I knew. I was like, okay, that did that for me. And then, so I, I slowly test the boundaries of stuff and, and put myself out there like dangling like the meat or whatever, like, come on, little lion, you know, and then right then they, he he came and got the, got, took the bait. And then I, I knew that that was, that was not him anymore. You know, that that was a different agent that had stepped in the body and that you know, that person is no longer trusted in my opinion, you know? Yeah. So, it, so I, it, I just turned, turned this way and then, you know, was like, this is, this feels a lot easier this way, you know, with um the disclosure stuff like that, you know? And so, and I yeah. don't put all my eggs in one basket either. I have to see everybody, you know, like I have to, I have, I don't just say, oh, he's the savior, you know, like, I'm not like that at all either. And none of us are. So we all kind of test each other in different ways, you know, just to see if they're telling the truth. Because like, that seems like the truth, but are they, are they being, what's going on, you know? So that's okay. Because you're, you're discerning things. You're just learning how to, to discern things and see, you know, and if it resonates, then, then, that's good and if it doesn't resonate the next time then you some you gotta kind of pull back your energy and just just kind of observe them and no just uh, you just have to kind of do that it just as part of the game with it you know yeah so well that's it that that's why i think i've ended up in the position i am because i really want to know what's going on and the only way i'm going to ever do that and like feed whatever it is in my head that needs to know this is by talking to a flat or earth or by talking to a paranormal investigator, by talking to a ghost hunter, by talking to a UFO researcher, by talking mm-hmm. to people, because what you can do beyond that discernment is the most wonderful tool for our disclosure. Because mm-hmm. once you get all of the stories from an objective standpoint, you can just look at the overlap and where it all comes together is the truth right like what rob is doing basically what exactly. rob is doing you know and yeah. and that's what he's doing is gathering rob is gathering all the information from people and even yeah. though he's like he's like he does enough work for for 10 oh. people there's no way i could do what he does i mean i have no oh. idea how he even does it you know it, it must not sleep like the, the guy is just uh, 
I've never yeah. seen somebody put more dedication and heart into a podcast. Like, really, he should be having a lot of money, you know, because of all the work he does in the oh. hours and stuff, you know, like he should have, he should be uh, 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 making money, you know, and all that yeah. with hey, like. If finance was matched with effort, that man would be doing all right. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. like all much. of us, all of us, the, the community, though, of people. It's not like we are all kind of in the same boat as him, you know, like we're like, I mean, I live off SSI. I don't have that extra money, but some people have that extra money to give, you know, so some people, they do, they have that money, you know, to, yeah. to donate, to give. And, you know, it's usually not like all of us in the, cause we're all kind of the same, like, man, I'm yeah. just getting by, you know, you know. Oh, so. absolutely. Like, um i like brian gave me a bit of advertising work i i work for maya here and there and like you know when i recovered my memories i couldn't function in that reality right at that moment so i've kind of turned to this to make money here and there i even put my name in as a dishwasher and never got a call back and i have like 10 years of restaurant experience it, mm -hmm. it's literally the universe does not want me to work right now Mm -hmm. I am just supposed to figure this out mm -hmm. because I have applied for like a hundred jobs I'm qualified for and nothing has yeah. panned out. And like, this is a job seekers market where I live. Yeah. Right. That, it, this... It's literally the universe is like, no, you're not doing that. You're not going back to what they want you to do. Right. The you're matrix. Gonna sit here and you're going to mm -hmm. listen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I have to do too, as far as so that the network thing, the 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 thing you was talking about, the four one one, uh, the one forty four four one one. That's good because we can kind of, um, you know, help all all of us kind of help each other, um, and make it more, more of kind of, uh, like I, you know, how the chat rooms turn into stupid stuff after some time because yeah. somebody will come in there and they're maybe like hijacked or something like it should be monitored. So there's not, so it's good, helpful information. And it's not just silly memes or nothing like that. You know, like it's a su actual yeah. support group and not something silly that turns into a fun little party, you know, then yeah, people no. don't want to talk because they don't want, they don't want to be laughed at, you know, they want to be taken seriously and they're coming with serious stuff, you know, so it's like a counseling or something, you know? Well, yeah, and it, it could kind of work in in conjunction with what Rob wanted to do with the paranormal counseling, because that's an excellent idea, too. And I hope that pops off for him as well. But like exactly what you're saying, like you don't want to base your experiences into the, like the discord or the chat on. Yeah, a, a I wouldn't. I wouldn't because... just share because people are like, can you explain blah, blah, blah. And I'm like. I ain't going to explain nothing because I don't even know who you are, you know? And, and this so. gives the opportunity to con connect people one-to-one -one because mm -hmm. like people know who you are. People know who I am. People know who Rob is. And a lot of these people are starting to add us to our social media accounts. And at this point in my life, if I can connect somebody to you, mm -hmm. yeah, I am more than happy to do that. If I can connect yeah. somebody to Rob, I can tell them how to approach them. If I can connect somebody to Chris Matthew, to Frank Castle, to Brian Sang, to, you know what I mean? Like, this is the help that we need because we are the answer. We're the disclosure. It's up to all of us to talk about it and get away from listening to what we're told. It's kind of like a, a, a how Facebook is, how everybody has their own little profile kind of thing and what they they do, you know, like that. And then they can go on that site and just select who they want to talk to, you know? Yes. Yes. Like that. Something along those lines. But yeah, then it's, it's more private. Or they can just leave a general private e email that goes to the board. And then we all kind of check it and read it and see if we can help them, you know? Yeah. No, I, I think this is a good idea. Yeah. But it's like a private, private email that they send. Like, I have this. I, I feel like I'm going crazy, you know, can somebody please help me? I've been blah, 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 you know, and then yeah. that those I would 100 percent grab that email or grab your message and help you, you know, because I could I could understand what you're saying. 
you know, because yeah. to so many people have felt like they've like they've been put in the psych ward because, you yeah. know, they thought just even like a week they checked themselves in because they thought they were losing their mind or they started drinking to try to like calm themselves or, you know, so. Yeah. Oh, I was an alcoholic for 30 years because after 15, I was yeah. on my own, thought I was grown. Like I felt like I was 20 years old. I just started living as yeah. an adult. I was mm -hmm. an alcoholic at the time I was yeah. 20. A lot of people are, have, you know, our generation and the, the X generation X, we had it hard, you know, we, we, we had to figure it out ourselves. And, and then, so we would, we done all kinds of crazy stuff, you know, we're the, we're tough though you know like we're really tough so yeah. Um, so yeah i i guess we'll cut it off there yeah, for today this good. is an amazing first yeah. epi episode yeah. of after dark um it, you were saying that you wanted to maybe do these readings to help mm -hmm. you pump up your finance a yeah. little bit on your end yeah is these. there anywhere people can get a hold of you directly or add you on facebook or you want to yeah um, well, I just did the interview with Dr. Kim, you know, she was on Rob's show and Dr. Kim house, you know, so that's the interview I did. She said she's going to help like kind of mentor me a little bit. I need some guidance of what to do and how to, what to charge. Cause I don't know exactly. Cause I'm like, you know, putting a value on something that I, I, you know, how that is, how you feel like that. So she's kind of helping me with that. And it, she just mentioned it tonight. So it's not even, it's just now starting to turn, you know, or however. So I'll, I can just, um, put that out there when, when we get that going and stuff like that. Um, but as far as like people can find me like on Facebook and then they can find me like on the YouTube, I leave, I make TikTok videos and then I put them on YouTube, like a, experiences with music and pictures and then share them on Facebook so I kind of go through those three and I am on Instagram too um so I'm kind of on all of those platforms and stuff but that's I don't really do that discord group because I mean you know like I my, I have a life too I have to live so I can't do everything all of these things and answer everything because you can burn yourself out if you do that, you know, because there's a point where you're just like beyond it. You just you just like I can't even I'm I can't do it today, you know, so you just want those are days you have ups and day, down days, you know, and you just don't want to like be the person that's always doing that. You have to work on yourself and heal yourself and look at look within on yourself and all that that's the only way you can help somebody is if you find the things within yourself that need help with healing and releasing it and talking about it and then they can come and ask you those things but you're not here to babysit you know they're not not at all i'm not yeah. gonna do that no um so i will wrap it up there i will get as many i i don't know if you want to give me a link to your facebook or whatever it'll yeah. put it in the description or okay. whatever mm -hmm. um and I also will add links for SOS QHT, full disclosure now, and the typical skeptic, because, you know, these are all awesome things that you should try out. Uh, SOS QHT, if you need hypnotherapy, a regression, even a guided meditation, Maya is the person to contact because she is willing to work with everybody. She does this as a healer. I, I'm not going to put her prices out, but you guys should definitely yeah. get a hold of her book a session. And uh, it, it's a very good healing modality. Um, you know, uh, aside from that, uh, like, subscribe, check us out. Uh, and I will. Uh, I see sent you, guys you my Facebook, my Facebook link right there that you could link it to that people can find me on, you know? Yeah. Okay. Dokie. I mm -hmm. will add that. In. Okay. Thank you guys. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.